Since the opening of the U.S. Space and Rocket Center in Huntsville, Alabama, six historic rockets have stood in the center's rocket park, forming the focal point of the center's space line. Each rocket has their own story to tell. However, one has always looked a little different than the others, with its atypical upper stages. The Jupiter Composite Test Vehicle, or Jupiter C, served the United States in the late 1950s by answering the starting gun that was fired with the launch of Sputnik 1, igniting the space race between the United States and the Soviet Union. The origins of the Jupiter C go back to the early 1950s with the creation of the Redstone Guided Missile, the United States' first short-range ballistic missile. This missile was developed by Dr. Werner von Braun and his team of rocket engineers working for the U.S. Army's Redstone Arsenal in Huntsville, Alabama. By the mid-1950s, word had reached the United States that the Soviet Union had developed an intercontinental ballistic missile capable of carrying a nuclear warhead. The Department of Defense set the Army and Air Force to develop competing missiles in the hopes that one of them would emerge successful in their efforts. The mission to develop the Army missile was assigned to Dr. Von Braun and his team at Redstone Arsenal. The missile was given the designation Jupiter, and work began. One of the first challenges discovered was that a much more durable nose cone would need to be developed for the Jupiter than had been developed for the Redstone. The Redstone, a short-range missile, you can have a metal nose cone and it will survive the re-entry, but at the velocity that you're traveling, if you're on an intercontinental ballistic missile, would burn up. So we did a Jupiter C, which was really just a Redstone that was equipped so it could simulate the velocity of re-entry. A slightly elongated Redstone missile was the first stage of the Jupiter C sounding rocket. It was elongated to allow for the additional propellant needed to match the Jupiter missile's trajectory. The upper two solid propellant stages of the rocket were completely new designs that were clustered in a tub on top of the first stage. The design originated from Dr. Von Braun's proposed Project Orbiter, his proposition to use a modified Redstone rocket to launch an American satellite to space as part of the upcoming International Geophysical Year from July 1, 1957 to December 31, 1958. The International Geophysical Year would be an international scientific interchange between 67 countries, including the United States and the Soviet Union. Von Braun was very much interested in going in space. He came up with this idea of putting up a satellite. We all worked for the Department of Defense, worked for the Army, okay? Von Braun had to answer to a general. But the Secretary of Defense, he said the Navy is going to put up our satellite. The prevailing belief that emerged was that the Department of Defense did not want the first satellite launched by the United States to be derived from a military launch vehicle like the Redstone. This is why it was believed that the Navy's Vanguard proposal was more attractive, with the Vanguard rocket having been derived from an existing Navy sounding rocket called the Viking. While the Project Orbiter proposal was not chosen, Dr. Von Braun was undeterred and used the first flight of a Jupiter C rocket as a proof of concept for Project Orbiter. On September 20, 1956, they successfully launched a Jupiter C rocket from Cape Canaveral, Florida, with a dummy satellite on board to demonstrate the rocket's viability to launch a U.S. satellite. The commander of Redstone Arsenal's Army Ballistic Missile Agency and Dr. Von Braun's boss, Major General John B. Medeiros, made one more overture with the Department of Defense to see if the Army could receive the mission of launching the first American satellite. So John Medeiros, who was head of our ABMA at that time, went to the Department of Defense and asked if we could have permission to put up satellite. And he said, no, Navy's got the assignment and they're working on the Vanguard. So he came back and said, we got turned down, but build one anyhow and put it in the warehouse. He said, they'll be calling on us. And that's a true story now. People think that was made up. <laughs> With the Jupiter C placed into storage in Huntsville, development work continued on the Jupiter nose cones. Scale models of the Jupiter nose cones were developed to be launched on top of the Jupiter C rocket. Two flight tests were conducted by the Army, with one on May 15, 1957, and the second on August 8, 1957. For the second test, they added one more additional solid propellant upper stage to the rocket. This four-stage configuration of the rocket would come to be designated the Juno-1, the success of these tests drew worldwide attention to the Jupiter-C rocket. This object here in my office 
is the nose cone of an experimental missile fired over a long distance. It has been hundreds of miles into the outer space and back. Here it is, completely unharmed, intact. During this time, the Navy was still working on their Vanguard rocket when the Soviet Union shook the world to its core when they launched Sputnik 1 on October 4th, 1957. We did fly the three stages. If we had the fourth stage on, we could have beat them. It was very discouraging to us, those of us here, especially at Marshall, because we could have done it a head up, and we weren't allowed to for probably good and valid reasons. But once they did it, then we knew we could get a chance. The Army did, in fact, finally get their chance, with General Medeiros receiving orders from the Department of Defense on November 8, 1957, to launch a scientific satellite within 90 days or less. We could have done it quicker, but it was already in the warehouse, but we couldn't reveal that to the Department of Defense. We had to pretend. Von Brown said 60 days, and, and uh, Medeiros said, no, 90 days, because 90, he had his dick out. Even with the completed Jupiter-C rocket in storage in Huntsville, it still took the team at the Army Ballistic Missile Agency 84 days to prepare the rocket for launch. They worked with the Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Pasadena, California, and physicist Dr. James Van Allen from the University of Iowa to come up with a scientific payload, the Explorer 1 satellite. While the Army was hard at work, the Navy had to put the finishing touches on their Vanguard rocket and were ready to try and launch the first American satellite on December 6, 1957. In the meantime, you know, they said the Navy's going to do it. Kaput, kaput, kaput. Then on January 31st, 1958, the Juno 1 configured Jupiter C rocket ignited and launched Explorer 1 into Earth orbit. America had now entered the space race with the Soviet Union. They put up about a 250 pound payload and the best we could do with our little redstone was about a 50-pound payload. But morale, it was a big, big, big boost. And I think having Sputnik go first probably motivated us even more to get to the moon before the Russians did. The Jupiter C rocket's legacy was further cemented with the launch of the Explorer 3 satellite two months later. With the data gathered from this launch, and the launch of Explorer 1, Dr. Van Allen was able to discover the existence of belt-like regions of charged particle radiation trapped by the Earth's magnetic field. These came to be known as the Van Allen radiation belts. By the end of 1958, the Juno 1 configuration of the Jupiter C was already replaced by other more powerful rockets to launch satellites. But its legacy continues on at the U.S. Space and Rocket Center. In 2019, the U.S. Space and Rocket Center's Jupiter C rocket was taken down for preservation work. Then in June 2024, it returned to the Rocket Center space line, re-erected toward the sky as if ready to launch one more time to continue to stoke the flames of inspiration in all who see it. <laughs>